you know, sometimes I've had experience with it, sometimes I don't, you never really know. What's up YouTube, it's Gigstacker. Today I'm gonna to be doing some Field Nation. I'm pretty excited because um, lately I've done a lot of Amazon Flex and a lot of caviar and I haven't been able to hit my daily income goals. With Field Nation, I'm gonna be pulling uh, 65 for the first hour. Then I'll be getting 45 per hour each subsequent hour after the first. And I'm gonna be going to a hotel in downtown DC. Um, work is going to be troubleshooting a wireless AP. Um, I have never done this one on my own before, so this is gonna be a new one for me, but I'm pretty excited. Uh, it's always nice to learn new things and try new things. Uh, so yeah. That's, that's what I'm heading to go do right now. But yeah, so this is one of the things that I really like about doing Field Nation, is just that the pay, you know, can sometimes be like really, really good compared to other gigs. Um, just for example, this first hour, it pays 65, right? That's worth three and a half hours of Amazon Flex. And then every subsequent hour that I'm on site, they're paying 45 an hour. That's worth two and a half hours of Amazon Flex if we're making the base pay of 18 per hour with Amazon Flex, right? Um, so, you know, what, what, that, what that allows me to do is I can just make much, much, much more money in a shorter period of time compared to doing the other gigs in my gig list. That's the monetary comparison of Amazon Flex and Field Nation. If I were to look at the psychological differences between doing Amazon Flex and Field Nation, um, it's a very stark difference. With Amazon Flex, I know exactly what I'm getting into. Going to a warehouse, I'm picking up boxes, and then I'm either going to houses, apartments, or businesses, and dropping off those boxes. You know, I can I can do that in my sleep. There's you know, there's it's 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 very simple. You know, psychologically, emotionally, it doesn't really take much of a toll. But now let's compare that to Field Nation. I could be installing routers, I could be troubleshooting a wireless AP, I could be installing registers, I could you know, I could be installing a network rack. You know, there's such a wide variety of different things I could be I could be doing on Field Nation. You know, sometimes I have experience with it, sometimes I don't. You never really know, and that can come to, that can be stressful. You know, because um, you are the person on site, you are the expert. You know, I am the expert, and sometimes I don't feel like an expert. You know, it can be kind of scary. You know, I do my best to look over the work order and make sure I understand what I'm getting myself into. Sometimes, you know, you can do all the research in the world, but what you actually see on site can be different. Every job site is different. And, you know, sometimes I even get this ball, you know, pit in my stomach when I'm heading out to a job site because I don't know what I'm going to run into. And, you know, it can be scary sometimes. But on the flip side of that, it can be very exciting, very exhilarating not knowing exactly what you're going to get into where the job is different every day, you know? So that's, you know, that's the emotional, emotional differences and psychological differences between, um, doing something like Caviar or Postmates and, um, Amazon Flex. Compare those to Field Nation or jobs of that nature. Earlier on, I was taught, I talked about my daily income goal. Uh, I, I got to my daily income goal by taking, you know, a yearly goal and extrapolating that down to work in five or six days a week. Um, so my income goal is about 200 to 500 per day. Um, if I do that, you know, then give or take, maybe I take some days off that I didn't intend on originally. I should be able to hit my yearly goal of uh, six figures or more. And the more I think about it, being able to hit my 
yearly goal with just you know caviar and Amazon Flex and you know the other lower paying gig economy work it's gonna be very difficult very difficult and if I do it it's gonna be at the sacrifice of a work-life balance like if I if, if I if I pull it off right if I if I do six figures with caviar and you know Amazon Flex and Postmates and Uber and Lyft and you know all the lower paying jobs that pretty much anybody can get into um, I won't have time to you know to, to to see my family much I won't have time to spend with my girlfriend I won't have time to <sighs> Man. I mean it'll just take up so much time like I'd be working like 80 hour 100 hour weeks you know craziness to be able to hit a six you know six figures doing doing you know basic gig economy work and that's not the life that I want for myself it's it's really not so that's led me to the conclusion that I've gonna, I'm going to have to focus more on Field Nation and other gigs that are paying $50 or more. Or even gigs that are paying, you know, $40 per hour or more. Because um, that $40 per hour working 40 hours a week, that's $80,000 net, not gross. $50 per hour working 40 hours a week would be a hundred thousand net not gross all right guys so i just finished that uh field nation work order it took me about two hours so that was again 65 for the first hour 45 for the second hour um i would have preferred to get a third hour but i finished sooner than i expected um yeah so pretty much the issue was that it was a ap outside um, near the pool, but since the AP was outdoors, water was able to get into the cabling and it corroded the Cat5 cable end. And that pretty much made it so that the, the AP, um, an AP stands for access point, where it gives a signal for wireless devices like your phone or laptop or whatnot. It wasn't able to get interconnection from the switch. And so initially what I did was I, I just tested the cable with a cable to tester and I found that only half of a signal was coming through. So I cut the end, reattached um, a Cat5 end onto it, tested it, I was able to get a full signal, plugged it back into the AP and the AP powered up and got a signal, it was working again. Um, I, I contacted my support, had them check to verify that the AP was up on their end as well. Uh, and that was it, cleaned up and checked out. And so, again, that was 65 for the first hour, 45 for the second hour. Since I'm already in DC, I went ahead and turned on Caviar, and I'll see if I get some, uh, get some pings. And if nothing comes through, I'll probably turn on Postmates as well. And while I'm waiting for orders to come in, I'm going to look through the notification section on Field Nation and see if I can apply for some more jobs. Hopefully, um, I can get something today. I saw one for the DC Zoo that was paying 40 bucks an hour, but I'd, it's not something that's in my skill set. Uh, definitely something I don't have the tools on hand to do either, so I'm not going to apply for that one. But I'll look around and see if there's any other local jobs on Field Nation that I can, uh, can get. get Alright, so I just did um, my first Postmates order, order of the day. It was a $7 order. Um, they had pinged me for two orders beforehand for uh, two fast food places and I don't like doing fast food so I declined both of them um, but right after I had accepted this uh, Postmates order I got pinged for an $8 caviar order I was just like darn <laughs> wish, wish, I, wish I waited a little bit because I would have loved to get that uh, the $8 caviar order you know, a dollar more than this Postmates one here, but, um, you know, it's, it's all good. Uh, so I'm, I think I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to try and do maybe like one or two more orders and then I need to head home and do some, uh, I need to do some editing. I need to work on my website and I think that might be it for the day. I just, uh, noticed this. 
Um, so I've been declining orders left and right for, for Postmates and Caviar. When you decline an order on Postmates, you know, you just hit the button and that's it, right? Nothing, it doesn't give you any alerts or anything like that. But when you decline an order on Caviar, it pops up a prompt for you to put in why you declined the order. And, you know, with Postmates, it's just like, oh, you declined, murk, murk. With Caviar, it's like, but why? Why didn't you accept my order? <laughs> so I just picked up an order with, uh, with Caviar after declining like five Postmates orders. <laughs> and this order is for, um, this order is for $11. So that, that's pretty dope. God, I love, I love, I love doing Caviar, man. I really do love doing Caviar. And Postmates can s All right, so I'm waiting for this caviar order to be ready. They said it'd be ready in a little bit. But um, while I'm waiting, I just wanted to talk about what it's like doing deliveries for caviar or anything in DC. Um, parking can be a nightmare. You're almost always going to be parking illegally. And with that in mind, yeah, I generally try to do deliveries in DC only at night because parking enforcement isn't out in force as much at that time. But um, me doing deliveries right now, I'm kind of scared because you know, I've seen a couple of parking enforcements around, out and about already, and it's kind of scary. You know, these tickets in DC can be really, really expensive. But Caviar, if you do get a ticket while you're working on one of their orders, they will pay one of your tickets. I'm not sure if it's like one per month or how often, or if it's based on how many orders you do or something of that nature. But yeah, so I'm gonna head back in and see if my, uh, my order is ready. I just finished up my order, uh, the first Caviar order that I've done for the day. That one was like 11.50. I just got pinged for another caviar order for about 7.50. But just while I'm on the topic of caviar, I just want to express why I love doing caviar so much more than Postmates. With with caviar, when I go to the restaurant to do my pickup, like the majority of the time, the order is already ready. I don't have to slide a PEX card. I don't have to put in an order. You know, I just go in. I need this particular order number and they're like okay you know it's it's here here you go or give us two minutes three minutes and we'll have this thing ready for you yeah so that is why i love caviar caviar is awesome uh, i'm gonna go ahead and uh, head off for this next pickup and yeah let's go get this money all right so that's it for me guys i am done gig stacking today field nation job i did a delivery for Postmates, two deliveries for Caviar, you know, so that's, 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 that's level three gig stacking right there. The only thing I'm missing today from my, uh, my gigs list is, uh, is Amazon Flex, but I ain't doing no Amazon Flex today. Not today. No, sir. <laughs> oh, man. Good day, good day, good day. Still early, too. It's only like, uh, it's only like 1.30, 2 o'clock right now, something like that. Yeah, this is cool, man. This is cool. Getting, getting, getting the day, uh, day out of there quick and early. Yeah. The big takeaway from the whole story of today is if you want to have a very high savings rate, which I do, you need to earn a lot of money, which I can, but I have to decide to. Like, it doesn't just happen. Like, I have to focus on the goal of earning a lot of money. Getting to that high savings rate requires two things. Being frugal, which I've always been frugal, and earning a lot of money. Now, that second part is something new for me. It's very new. Like, normally, I, I, I don't spend much money, but I don't earn much money. Um... And now I'm trying to consistently earn larger and larger amounts of money so that my frugality actually means something, you know? For you guys as well, I think it's very important that you earn more money, but you save more money, you know? It's those two things, you know, making the gap larger. Earn more, spend less, makes the, the gap in the middle the amount that you get to keep and hopefully invest um, larger and larger, you know? And the, the better you get at doing those two things, 
the quicker you'll find that you are FI. You know, you're financially independent. Whether or not you want to actually fire, which is uh, financial independence, retire early, or if you just want to FI and have your financial independence so that, you know, your life is much more stress-free and you can do things that earn money that you more so enjoy. For me personally, my, my purpose for reaching FI is twofold. One, I want to have a stress-free life. And two, I want to not focus on earnings so that I can start an indie game development studio. Like to me, that, that is very important. And I, I love big games. I love gaming and I love game development. Um, I just have chosen the path of IT to get me to game development instead of just doing game development right off the bat. Uh, but yeah, so that's, you know, that's my reason why I want to become FI. You know, hit me up down in, this, in the uh, comment section, guys. I want to know, why do you want to be FI? Why is your FI? Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, it's so silly. Silly, but it's funny. Anyways, um, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And keep stacking. Stack your money. Stack them gigs. Stack on. Stack hard. Stack often. Stack all day. Don't stack all day. It's not good. It's not good for you. It's going to hurt your body. It's going to hurt your bones. Don't do that, guys. But keep stacking. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more videos, you can check them out right here.